Correlate it to Bruce Banner being unable to turn into the Hulk or even Superman giving up his powers. We just never got to see the true Marvel that is Ronald Acuna Jr. during the 2022 season and his return from a knee injury. What went right in that season? What went wrong and what's next? You're watching BPTV, Corey McCartney and Grant McCauley with you as always as we continue our Braves player review slash previews. And Grant, there may not be a more confounding season than the one that we saw play out with Acuna, who frustratingly wasn't the player everyone's accustomed to seeing. And not only that, he wasn't the cut, the player that he was accustomed to being. And I think that might have underscored the real frustrations of his season because it felt like you'd see the flashes of it. All the tools were on display at different times, but it never seemed like he put it all together. And that, as they say, was really the story of his season was just not being able to quite get back to the level that he had set, the bar which he had set very, very high through his age 23 season. So let's start as we do here with what went right and lost a, ahead of the 2021 All-Star break and missing the duration of the Braves World Series run. He was basically resigned to being arguably the world's most talented cheerleader. He was the least back on the field for 119 games in 2022 after that torn right ACL. And while the numbers were down as Acuna dealt with the lingering effects from that injury and some other ailments that obviously popped up along the way stemming from it, he still hit 14% above league average. He still swiped 29 bases. He still still hit 15 home runs. The max exit velocity was 98th percentile. The hard hit rate was 92nd percentile. The ingredients, they were all there at times. It felt like he kind of was like a nailed it version of one of the game's best players. Maybe not, you know, the, the, the absolute effort that you would want if you were a master chef, but it yeah. was your at home version of it anyway. Well, I mean, and again, the bar was set so high for this guy. I mean, when he went down with that knee injury in 2021, I mean, you were making a case that this guy was not only the Braves MVP, but he might have been the MVP front runner of the National League. At least he was on a very short list, and then everything went wrong for him. But if you're asking me what went right this year, yeah, the stolen bases look good. Yes, those exit velocities look great. A lot of his savant numbers look particularly good, and he seems like he's still the guy that we expect him to be. The numbers overall didn't bear it out because he wasn't, you know, hitting at a 280 plus clip. He wasn't on basing at the same level. And obviously you don't expect Ronald Acuna Jr. to be slugging around 400 over the course of a season. But let me tell you the one stat that I did appreciate seeing is that once Ronald Acuna Jr. came back, there was no lengthy absence. He didn't have to be shut down for a month. He was on the field more times than not. And I know that the way in which the Braves had to bring him along was at times, I'm sure, frustrating for him and frustrating for fans as well. They were trying to work him back easily and not overwhelm him with playing every inning of every game, especially in the outfield in the early going. He did have to deal with some maladies, some soreness, and he had he ripped off a couple of quotes, including, my knee feels terrible, which made a lot of people wonder what in the world was going on there. But at the end of that day, in the end of this season, Ronald Acuna Jr. got through it, and I think he's going to be the better for it going into a winter in which he can have some normalcy, play some winter ball, work out, not rehab, relax, and then come back to spring training and hopefully get back to being the guy we expect him to be. It's easier to pinpoint what went wrong in that up and down season. And Acuna wasn't always on the field when he needed uh, to rest that knee. Obviously, the way to run create a plus was 31% lower than Acuna's average in his previous four seasons. His F4 was less than nearly half of what he's produced in yep. those seasons. He walked less, was swinging out of the zone more. Defensively, had the first negative outs above average of his career in right field with minus six. But I do have to say, I mean, he, he still, again, he gave flashes. He still gave above, above league average production. And when you think about it like this, if it wasn't for the DH where he had 127 of his 533 plate appearances, he may not have even made it through the year without a stint on the IL. That's probably true. And then again, we just don't know how it would have been managed, but at the very least he would have become one of baseball's most exciting platoon players rather than one of baseball's most exciting uh, cheerleaders, as you put it a little bit earlier in the 2021 postseason. But, you know, you looked at what happened last year for Ronald Acuna Jr. He's more than a 2.2 F war player. In fact, over the 162 games av averaged out over the course of his first four seasons, this guy's a seven war player. And it was very, I don't know, shocking is the word, but it was kind of humbling maybe this year in a lot of different ways because, you know, it's not that the guy didn't work hard, but it's sometimes life throws a lot at you. And in the, the relation to this knee injury, that changed the dynamics for Ronald Acuna Jr., who was used to being, I think, the best player on the field. Not that he's not trying hard, 
but not having to probably try as hard as he was having to do this year. It just kind of worked itself out this way. I think this was the first time he had to deal, obviously, with this kind of injury, thus this kind of adversity. And I just don't think that he was used to having to you know, be a guy that just wasn't naturally the most gifted player on the field and from a full-time health perspective, full-time player perspective, you know, it's just something that I think may have, you know, given him a little glimpse of what it is like when it doesn't come as easy. And as I said earlier, getting him back on the field, that is it is job number one. And going through this, I always feel like you are able to learn some lessons through your struggles that you don't learn when everything's going right. And I think that Ronald Acuna Jr. will be the better for the adversity he had to face this year, particularly grinding through the season when he did not feel 100%. You could probably make the case that this was the first time since Acuna was a little kid that he probably wasn't the best player yeah. on the field. When he's in, and he didn't feel like he was capable of being the best player on the field when he was out there. So we have to now look at what's next for the three-time All-Star and two-time Silver Slugger Award winner. If what we're seeing play out in the Venezuelan Winter League is any indication, Grant, I think the man is going to be on an absolute mission. I, small sample size, that's all you want. But you hit 452 with an OPS of 1192 in an absolute show in a home run derby. I mean, the, the, he's not playing around. And hopefully that normal offseason is going to lead into a year in which, you know, that, as you mentioned earlier, that terrible knee pain is an afterthought. I think 2023 is going to be a return to being a certified superstar for Ronald Acuna Jr., let me large sample size it for you. Ronald Acuna Jr. per 162 prior to the 2022 season, which we just documented was clearly not what he wanted and not what anybody expected. 281 hitter with a 900 plus OPS, averaging 42 homers, 32 steals, 100 runs batted in and 130 runs scored all to the tune of a 7.1 average F4 over 162. Clearly, we had the 2020 shortened season. We had Ronald Acuna Jr. having the knee injury that wiped out the second half of his 2021. But if you watch this guy in 2019, of course, and you watched him in his rookie year, and he's doing all of that at 20, 21 years old, this guy hasn't even come in to the prime of his career yet. So allow him to reintroduce himself to the National League and all of baseball in 2023. I'm with you, Corey. I think it's going to be a show that people are going to be very excited to be watching, particularly those who are wearing Braves paraphernalia and filing into Truist Park by the millions upon millions as they did a year ago and the year prior. Steamer projections have him with a 5-5 F4, which would be a career high. 31 home runs, 36 deals, 138 way of run creator plus. That would be no doubt a welcome sight after what Braves fans watched Acuna go through in the 2022 season. The offseason rages on, and BP TV is with you all the way. So if you haven't already, subscribe, turn on notifications, and tell a friend. And be sure to listen to us on From the Diamond, available wherever you find your podcasts. Until next time, I'm Corey McCartney. He's Grant McCauley, and we'll see you soon, Braves country.